Oh my god. Okay, I go there. Oh my god. Oh my god. I finally invented a time machine! <laughs> what? Oh my god. Time machine? Let's kill him! Kill him! Oh great. Let's kill him! Kill Come him! Come on, babies! Hey! All the going on, throw your hands up! Throw your hands up! Throw your hands up! If you like the party pipe, throw your hands up! Throw your hands up! Throw your hands up! Hey! All my ladies, throw your hands up! Throw your hands up! Throw your Please work. Where's where's my time machine? Where'd it go? Hello. As you can see, our hero Kendon has been transported back into the mindset of the Elizabethan age. During this time period, it was chaos if you were a criminal. You were most likely going to die if caught. Now, our poor Kendon, misguided and coerced, thinks that he, well, has been misguided and coerced, and without the proper help, he will be executed. Now, let's get back to the action and see what poor Kendon has been up to. What are you guys doing? What did, what, what did I do? <laughs> Poor kid. He never saw that coming. Of course, he never thought he did anything wrong. But a lot of people didn't do things wrong back then, and they got charged for it. Like poor Kendon will soon find out. We found Kendon the peasant guilty of witchcraft. I didn't do any witchcraft. Wait, I don't remember doing that. That's kind of creepy. That's what we thought. Off to the Tower of London! What? What are you guys talking about? What is this tower? Now, poor Kendon was being taken to the Tower of London. Now, this place, if I do not mind saying so myself, this place of pure evil. A place where everyone dies. You go in, you don't come out. A place of torture full of types of mechanical devices just meant to kill. Paul Kendon didn't know what was coming. Where am I? Now Kendon just met one of the tower's greatest thrill rides, the wreck. Pretty much he almost got his limbs from his body, his midsection ripped apart. <clears throat> but Kendon survived, unfortunately, because now he has to see some of the other things that are in the tower. At the donkey side. Kendon was forced to go into the ducking stool or he was nearly drowned in the river to get information out of him. All they got was a bunch of screaming, so they let him go. Now, Kendon next. Had to go up against one of the possibly the most mentally devastating things that could be done. He was put out in public without food to starve to death. Phil! I just want to feel, I just want to Shut up! Oh, oh. I say, how did I get in this movie? <sighs> hey, I don't know. Do you want a, do you want a pretzel, sir? Please. Oh, yes, please. Oh, just, the wonderful pretzel, sir. Just a, mm. just a little mm. feel. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Would you like a pretzel? Yes. Well, that's too bad, because I'm English and you're not. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. That was kind of awkward and weird. But I am back, <clears throat> here at Harvard University. <clears throat> Next, our poor assailant, friend named Kendon, was stoned in the square. You're being stoned now! No! No! Kendon had just been stoned. But he was lucky, because sometimes they used rocks as big as his head. 
and sometimes the size is his brain. So he is a rather lucky fellow. <clears throat> Unfortunately, his luck had just about run out. <clears throat> they <clears throat> used a process called hanging, drying, and quartering, which in uh, common terms is hanging, cutting open your stomach, and burning your intestines in front of you while you're still conscious. I forgot. I also cut off his arms and legs at the same time. Then they proceeded to cut him down. Let's go to him! Ah! 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 It was just a dream. Hey. Where's my arms? No! No, oh, my arms! I don't have any arms! Let's uh, draw him now! No! No! Paul Kendon survived, miraculously, which is very, very hard to do when you get your intestines cut out. Unfortunately, got his tongue cut out. And in the way to proceed to final death, he was put to the test with being beheaded. How are those hands back? He's dead. ceased to live. He was pretty much dead. His cells no longer moved. Blood was no longer pumping through his body. His heart had stopped. His brain had ceased working as it had when he was born. And now he was dead. The poor fellow didn't have any chance. You see, I was sitting here in my study at Harvard, and suddenly a head popped through the window. It was Kendon's. I looked into his face one last time and said, Hey! It's time for the Wild West Fools next week here on Saturn! Fee, fee, fi, fi, fo, fo, fum. I smell smoke in the auditorium. Charlie Brown! Charlie Brown! Kendon had finally died. His body had ceased to have life in it. Top of the morning to you, my accents. <laughs>